So this record has been sitting on a, a hard drive for about a year. I did a I did a tour in Europe last year, my first headline tour, and uh, about it. Governor B um, came out on some of those shows. So we had a layover, like a, a day off, I think in like Hamburg in Germany, and uh, I can't remember specifically. It's probably in the in the video footage, but. Um, we had like two hours before we had to leave for the next uh, venue. And Governor was like, we got to do a song, man. And I was like, <laughs> I was like. Wait, by the way, this song is out right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're releasing all these songs. So it's like out right now. You can literally pause this right now and like go listen to it and then come back or you can do it later. But it's out right now. Finally. Yes. So uh, I had just started working uh, with this dude, Iggy who made no chains for KB and he sent me a batch of beats that were fire. And so I just pulled them up and we were sitting in a hotel room. It was me, Governor B, Ray Rock, my DJ, and um, uh, one of the videographers. And I just said, yo, we have like an hour to write this and to record this. And I had been in the shower like a city or two before. And this is actually where all my best ideas come from. And, I, you know, sometimes I'll just be thinking of phrases in my head or writing raps while I'm showering. Or like, you know, your inhibitions are down and you're just, things are coming to mind. And I was like, yo, keeping it moving. I was like, yo, that's a really good phrase. Like, you use it all the time. Right. But it's it's usually in songwriting, the best stuff is the stuff that's like right under your nose. You use it all the time. You say it. But you don't actually think about putting it into a record. And so... um, so I grabbed that phrase and I was like, keeping it moving. I could hear that definitely being on something. And so he pulled up a beat. And uh, one of the things I struggle with is like, when I feel like I have a good idea is like letting it go at the right time. Hmm. Sometimes I feel like I got to hold on to it for the right moment. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I hold on to it so long, it just never comes out or I forget it. Right. So I think that's something I'm working on is, is just uh, knowing that creativity is more like a, um, it's more like a faucet. Like the more you open it and the more you use it, the more it flows freely. And we think we got to hold on no, and not release it, it, you know, you but it keep getting it out, keep releasing it, more actually comes. Like, you won't run out of ideas. Mm. So uh, I was like, all right, forget it. I'll just use this idea that just came to mind for this record. So I was like, keeping it moving, keeping it moving. We put it down. It sounded great. And uh, I didn't have a full studio set up, so I did what I normally do, which is I got this little USB microphone, the same one that I did I Ain't Done With, Word. the same one that I did um, You Can't Stop Me With. I just plugged it right into the laptop and we used like a little um, pop filter, like a, uh, a portable one. And we sat there at this desk. We wrote everything, we put the beat on, we wrote it in like 20, 30 minutes, both of us. And uh, we recorded it right there on the spot, like one or two takes. And you know, it's the USB mic definitely doesn't sound like all the way like the studio mics, but they it sounds really, really good. And especially when you start to EQ it and do the effects, you can make it sound incredible. So what you're hearing on my take is that USB mic in a hotel room. And uh, I kept it, you know, sometimes it has a thing to it. When you try to go back and remake, remake it, it just loses that, that specialness. So, soul. so here's the thing. Every time I've used that USB mic, um, the songs have performed really well. What's the I ain't company done. that made that mic? Apogee. Put that email together. We need that uh, Holler cor at corporate me. spot. Apogee, hey, call me. I had a question, Andy. Um, when you was going through beats, um, was that the first beat you picked in the photo? Like, what's nah? Because I, I know how you. I do. picked a completely different beat, and the issue was like I loved the beat, but I, it sounded a little bit like Drake, the beat. The beat sounded like a Drake like, beat. Yeah, and I was like, I just. He's so popular and so big that sometimes if you pick something a little too close to his flavor, I just, that's something that kind of skeeves me. And I, I'm always like in tension with like not making exactly what is popular. But if you pull from pop culture, pull in a, in a unique, unique way. way yeah. So I'm, I'm always feeling that tension as an artist. Like I, I really want to be my own person, want to create my own things. The tension that I feel though is to really find your own voice, your own sound, your own thing, you have to make a lot of things. Right. And you have to fail a lot to get to the good stuff. And um, I think for me, now that my career is moving and going and like people are like, okay, you got a gold record, give us another one, like keep it moving. Cause you know, you have people's attention span for so long. 
I feel like I have to churn out music a lot quicker and the pressure for it to be really good is really high. Oh, it's higher, yeah. So, you know, I don't sometimes feel like I had the luxury of before I released my first album, I could make a million songs and fail and bite somebody or try to sound like this person. And it's all part of the learning who you are and learning your voice. Mm -hmm. And you can throw those things out and no one will ever hear them. Right. Now that the, there's momentum and movement, I gotta be like, I'm putting in work on this and it probably needs to come out as well. So that's always a ten That's why these records, a lot of these records sat around for so long. These were throwaways. These are things I was like, ah, I'm not ready to put that out. It's gotta be better. So we, we, we was gonna scissor you eventually. Steal the hard drive. <laughs> Yeah. I was gonna ask, like when you when you made Keeping It Moving, um, cause you made it in an hour, shot the video the same day. Was it like kind of like limiting like to get that out? How how was how, how'd you feel? Because I know you were a very methodical person with your art. Right. And then, you know, like that being a different way in you create, like how that feel, just kind of getting that energy out. Yeah. I was trying to shake things up for me because I've been feeling creatively frustrated. And I know when that starts to happen, I need to jolt myself. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, try something new. Right. And I need to be open to that experience often. Um, because if you fall into patterns, then creating can become stale. And when that's happening, like, you know, there's right. a whole slew of other issues. So it was exciting because there was low stakes and there's no pressure for it to come out. And actually, it wasn't going to come out until we did this. And I was like, you know what? I'm sitting on a bunch of good stuff in the vault that I might not think- Drop the heat, greatest. man. You tripping, yeah. man. <laughs> I might Drop be like, heat, ah, bro. it's cool. But people are like, yo, we like this. And I, we're, we're your fans and we want to hear from you. And we want to hear what you're creating. And I was like, you know what? That's not right of me to leave things on the, the vault. I mean, you we can put this out. Yeah. So the other thing that was weird was shooting the video was like, I didn't even remember the lyrics. So you could see in the video, I was like, mm -hmm, like just, you just something else. Because I just wrote it. Um, and then at the same time, what we were doing with the music video was I was basically directing the video while we were shooting it. So I was like, all right, let's just do some weird stuff. And we were like in a back alley in like Germany. Well, I think, and I was yeah. like, pick up some cones and, you know, start rapping through the cone and just do weird stuff. And so it, it was just an experiment. Yeah. And, uh, I guess. I yeah, I feel know. like sometimes though, even in like rap culture now, like a lot of young dudes on the gram are like, yo, I made this song an hour. I made this song in three hours. And it don't. It's, it sometimes it sounds like it. I think the testament to that record and what you do is, I feel like you've put in your ten thousand hours to where you really can do a song in three hours and it can be a really good jam because you put that work in. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think the takeaway for me as a creative is just because you have a limited time doesn't mean it's always gonna be like a genius moment. Because sure. if, you, if you're not really a genius, it's gonna be a. It could be a really whack right. moment too. Right. Which a lot of this, a lot of songs that are out now, you, I'm like, yo, I spent. 30, 30, I spent two hours on the song. I'm like, yeah, I can hear it. So I think there's there's brilliance in taking your time with it. But if you've got the saws, if you've got creativity, if you've got that like genius level execution, you put in your 10,000 hours, you can write a verse in, a, in an hour. And because you put that time in, it's still gonna come out dope. So, sure. Yeah. Your, your selection, your choices along the way yeah. are refined. You, you're you're so, right. yes, you're not gonna go too far, but man, it's, it's something dope about doing a lot, a little bit of time. Even, um, I think Drake and Future did that mixtape in like a in like four or five days. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it started off as a song. They just wanted to do a record, just and then go. they just you just turn up and just go, man. So, that's what uh, what were your first impressions when you heard the record? Keeping um, it moving. I thought it was a, like it, it's fun. It just sounded fun. Like it's like Andy's a very animated person. His communication style is like broad and just fun. It's just fun. It was something I wanted to play back. You know what I'm saying? And I think this record's like two minutes and like ten seconds. The secret sauce about that, especially in the streaming era. So for you, it was a no-brainer. Let's put yeah, it out. Yeah, it's fun. Let's put it out. Let's go. But for you... From... Oh, no. What? What was it? Um, I don't know. There was a couple things to not wanting to put it out. I was just like, uh... Is it dope? Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, it is dope. That's That's established. Yeah. I think maybe you don't even remember what you were overthinking about it now, dude. But something that's interesting that I want to say before I forget is how you will be on the fence about something or be like, nah, and you look up, but what do y'all think? And if your inner creative circle that you trust is like, that's dope, you're like, oh yeah, it is that dope, then let's put it out. Because with this yeah. track, he was on the fence about it forever, and I couldn't give him that affirmation. Like, 
definitely put it out because maybe the, I can't you, be you fake. Were, you were on the fence too. Well, I was like, man, it's hey, cool. man, take it or leave it. Like, we could do whatever with that. I don't feel, I don't feel like, you know, some, I, I pick and choose my battles. Like, the track sure. is dope. The track is dope. dope I yeah. think objectively, the joint knocks. But I wasn't like wild enthusiastic about it, probably for like personal subjective reasons. Just didn't connect with me like that. But, um, um, when Andy can't get that from anyone that he trusts, he's like, yeah, then let's not put it out. And it wasn't until I hit him like a week ago that, or like a couple of days ago that I was like, yo, man, Ace, because this is something we haven't talked about. Governor B wanted to put it out. And you were like, oh, that's fine. Because now I'm just featured on the track. I don't got to overthink it or nothing like that. It's just somebody else's track, which to you being a featured artist is like way easier because you don't feel like it's part of like the, the catalog indie legacy yeah. and catalog yeah. and something yeah. that's going to say something about you forever. And Governor B is like, yo, let's just put it out. And you're like, yo, man, I think we should just do that. You know, I can just fall back. And Ace was like, nah, yo, this joint is fire. I want to put it out. Like, we want to put it out. And Marcus is like, yo, this joint is fire. And guess what? I told him, I'm like, yo, man, Ace feels strongly that we should put it out. He's like, yo, let's do it then. <laughs> that's hey, all it took. It makes me smile, Andy. <laughs> that's all it took. No, that's no. all it took is for someone that's in the inner circle that he trusts to be like, nah, this is dope. And he's like, all right, then let's do it. You know what I mean? But that doesn't apply with everything. We'll talk about a different song or that didn't apply on another episode. But yeah. what do you think about that? No, I think, I think, um, that's dope. I mean, that that's that's where you lean on each other, lean on community. And that's that's straight out straight out the script, man. Like lean on community, trust your brothers to see what how they can help speaking to your art.